Now, Indian curries are complex in nature, and each region has their own unique style of curry and spices that they use. Just remember, all our recipes are on our website. Now, I'll start by making the masala, and this will form the flavor base of my curry. Now, cloves are actually a dried flower bud, one of the world's oldest spices. It pairs well with roasts as well as apples. Also popular in Chinese cooking and is an essential spice in Chinese five spice mix. Ground or whole, a very versatile aromatic. Now for the coriander seeds. These have a warm, subtle flavor with a citrus hint. Popular in Indian cuisine and is an essential ingredient to garam masala. Now it's best to buy them in whole seed form and then to crush them into a powder to impart the best flavor. Now the cumin seeds. Now this spice gives Mexican and Middle Eastern foods their uniqueness. Also very popular in breads and cheese making. Once again, it is best to use in seed form and to ground when you require powder. Then, some dry red chilies for that extra kick. Next, I'm adding these star anise. This star-shaped spice has a very similar smell to licorice. Quite pungent in nature and a little goes a long way. So be careful when adding this to your dishes. It's also excellent to use in poaching liquids for fruit. The turmeric, member of the ginger family and gives the typical Indian orange yellowish color. Most often used in Indian curries and mustard for heat. Now mix well to combine and place the spices combination into a dry medium sized pan. Over medium heat, toast until the spices become aromatic. Gently move the spices around the pan so that they don't burn. Now by toasting these spices before using them, allows them to release their natural oils, which will make our curry a lot more fragrant. After a minute or so, take the spices off the heat and place it in either a food processor or a pestle and mortar. Grind to a fine powder and when done, remove and place into a bowl. Now I'm going to add the rest of my masala ingredients into the same bowl. The palm sugar, salt, crushed garlic, ginger root and tamarind. Mix them all together. Right, now for the fun part. Heat the oil in a large pan over medium high heat and add the chopped onion and fry until soft and lightly golden and then stir in the masala mix. Now cook, stirring for a couple of minutes until you can really smell the spices for about two to three minutes. Then stir in the tomato and cook until most of the liquid has evaporated. This should take five to eight minutes. Leaving the liquid to evaporate allows the tomato to intensify and also reduces the acidity. Now with my curry now starting to cook, it's time for me to add the rest of the ingredients. Add the coconut milk and 100 milliliters of water and stir to combine. Next, add the fresh chilies and bring the curry to the boil. Now adding freshly chopped chilies towards the end of the cooking gives you a really hot curry. If you don't like hot curries, then just simply leave them out. Now, add the fish and the prawns to the curry. It's easy to overcook seafood and because it's cut into small chunks, it will cook even quicker. I suggest to cook it for five minutes and no longer. Right, now for the tatka. Now, tatka is the Hindi word for tempering and it's very popular in India. It's a process where spices are fried in hot oil to basically infuse the oil. Now, it's either done at the beginning of a dish or at the end and then poured over a dish. Start by heating the oil in a frying pan and then add the mustard seeds and the curry leaves. Now cook for 30 seconds until the seed starts to pop and then add the hot tatka over the curry. Right, now to plate up this beautiful dish. 
I'm serving this curry with steamed rice and fresh coriander, but it's also great with some naan bread.